Welcome everyone back to ShiftCast. This is episode eight. Today we have a special guest, Seamus. We have kicked uh, Michael off the show. He's a bum. Got rid of him. No, I'm kidding. He'll be here <laughs> later. Uh, Michael will join us for the stuff after we uh, finish talking with Seamus. So you'll get to see him later. But for now, we're going to talk to Seamus here of the fast forward roster. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but three top nine finishes to split. Is that right? Um, I think it was two. Two, two and then one, 12 through 14. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and this is your first time making RLCS main event this season? Uh, no. Uh, f well, I think I made two last season. Two last season. Okay. Two so three. still fairly new to RLCS main events. And last season, obviously, with, with two, um, it's a little bit more inconsistent i guess we'll say and now you have uh, three back-to-back -back qualifications which like you know I, all of you pros may not think that's a big deal but I'm, I'm here to say that it actually is i mean we saw even moist you know a team yeah. that a lot of people were were saying uh could even contend for major miss out so with this format man like um you know consistently being a main event is actually something to be proud of so that's exciting well let's talk a little bit about your come up and how you got to where you are today um when did you even start playing Rocket League? Um, I think I started playing late 2017, early 2018. Okay. Like around there. Is there was there any like moment or something that sparked it that prompted you to to pick up the game? Um, it's just my cousin. It was, really? I think it was like during Christmas or something. Where it's like because uh, we have Christmas with like my cousin's family. Yeah. Um, he was playing it. He was around gold. So he was like, yeah, because like split screen, we played split screen and yeah, uh, awesome. it was just good crack luck. Like, it was good fun. Yeah, absolutely. It's to start. There. It yeah. is, man. Yeah. It's split, when I, I always, I was the same way. I started split screen at, uh, back when I was in college with my buddies and we were, it was actually four. So we had like f the little boxes. Oh no. Oh, I hope the TV was large four, enough. Four, dude. Yeah, four. And, and we yeah. went, you know, we went straight to chaos and we were trash, but it was a good time. Well, um, so 2017, 18. And then from there, obviously, I feel like all these pros are, are a very similar story where they pick it up. It's very casual. And they realize like, wait, I'm actually improving really quick. Um, was there a moment where you're like, you know what? Actually, I think I'm going to take this a little bit serious, uh, a little bit more serious and maybe start playing some tournaments, six mans, et cetera. Um, I think it was like, uh, there's like a lot of like leagues, like yeah. around back then, I think it was like ERLS or something. Uh, you just played that. I think it was like champ maybe at the time. It wasn't, I was all right. Like, um, and then uh, after that, I was just like, I was just enjoying competing, really. Yeah. So I would just kind of like uh, team with some people, you know, just play for fun. I didn't play any of the tournament. I didn't play like RLRS because I think it was a like, 15 back then. I was like 14 or 13. Um, but like, yeah, I was just enjoying that. I actually, the first like time I actually start like started thinking of, you know, I might try and go pro here um, is when Crispy messaged me out of nowhere. We were like both so like, young um he was like yeah do you want to do some tryouts we we're like yeah go on and we just like kept playing from there i was just yeah just happened that's, like that's great because yeah, yeah. you were you live in ireland right yeah yeah so are you kind of part of that uk ireland scene as well um yeah yeah i'd say somewhat yeah i don't really talk to many people i have like a closed friend group i mean the uk scene a lot of people just have a closed friend group it's, it's like a lot of different friend groups really uh, yeah. compared to like other like communities like the french community they're all like so close together yeah. in spanish um but yeah it's just like yeah um, you gonna go to london for the major two? Oh uh, yeah i'm thinking of it but the only issue is i have my final exams oh no uh, mm. and my last exam is on the 21st when on friday i have but a I, similar issue I can yeah. relate. Yeah. <laughs> That's I, believe it or not, I was already wearing my RFCS London shirt yeah. before they announced. <laughs> That's funny. Um, before they announced the location. Cold. cold. Well, let's, um, let's flash back to the end of last season. With your roster last season, did you all kind of agree that you're probably going to split ways, try something new? And then talk me through how you um, ended up with this fast forward roster. Okay. So the best, the funniest thing about this roster is kind of it was like kind of my last option <laughs> like my last dead last option which i'm obviously grateful it happened sure. um i think the last team i had before fast forward was me mets uh, and compact i think yeah it was uh we made the last uh regional of the season but we obviously bombed out last yeah. both years but it's fine uh i think how it happened mets uh told us that you think you're retiring 
And I was just like, um, you know, just look for different options. Because me and Rizix were also messaging a lot back then. Uh, I was playing him with Tech Oz a good bit. We we uh, we did pretty well in like an off-season tournament. I think it was like um, Rising Stars Odyssey tournament. Yeah. We got second in that, lost to Joy O'Drowley and Extra. Uh, game seven, but you know what happens. Uh, and then, yeah, after that, Rizix and Tech Oz kind of did their own thing. Um, didn't really have, I was thinking of sobbing this season, honestly, yeah. or not playing at all. And then, um, can't remember who I played with. It was, yeah, Scream. I played with Scream and Lassa in the, the rendezvous, lost to Compact, Justice, and Edgeby. And then I was like, yeah, let me try it with these guys. If, if you can't beat them, join them. Uh, <laughs> right. And then, yeah, it just worked from there, really. That's how it happened. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah, it's funny because all the names, well, most of them are kind of your generation of rookies coming into the ROCS, right? Yeah. Coming yeah. into Rookie League. Yeah. Yeah. You're coming up <laughs> alongside them. That's really nice to see. So this season, I think, um, I mean, there's a lot of similarities to last season. Um, but now you are making every main event, which means there's probably not as many uh, breaks. You don't have as much downtime. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about adjusting from last season where maybe you didn't consistently make main event to now where, I mean, and, and with this format, you're playing every single weekend. You're playing open qual and then you're going into the main event. So um, how do you balance that as well as the stuff that you've got going on in life? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's really hard to balance with school. Um, it's been such a, I struggle, but I'm getting through it. Uh, and I'd say even last season when I had all those breaks, I still played the game so much. Right. Regardless, um, still doing like still warming up teams who are in the championship Sunday, Saturday. Um, yeah, it hasn't really been too much of an adjustment, but it's been difficult for sure because coming up to my final exams, yeah, it has been tough. Mm -hmm. Get to stay focused. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you talked totally. a little bit about uh, Metza, obviously Compact and, and Edgeby as well. Um, are there any other teammates or, of course, any of those as well, any other teammates before them, I guess, that you feel uh, you, you have learned from or, or taken some um, inspiration from potentially? Uh, talk to me a little bit about your climb from back in the days when you're champ and you first talked to Crispy and you're talking about uh, pursuing competitive to where you are now some of the different uh, players that you've played with and the impact that they've made on you. Okay. So I think when I, I didn't really properly start watching around CS till I started teaming with like crispy around that time, like 2020, 2019. Um, I'd say uh, the team who like kind of inspired me to be so like wanting to win. It was, um, uh, I think it was like, uh, oh, who was the team? It was it Matt's gray. Mads and uh, the Danish team. Kern. It was Minx Gaming because yeah. we yeah. always kept getting farmed by them in weeklies and everything like that. <laughs> Just annoyed me so much. <laughs> um, didn't really watch the gameplay, but it was. I just wanted to beat them so bad. We probably have like a six and oh, oh and six record against them. Yeah. Um, it was ridiculous. We played them in every single weekly. Um, whereas I'd say. Metanoris also helped me a lot to like say positive during tournaments yeah. and so on. Devo was also really good because just he's so experienced. He knows what to say in in tough situations. Um, but I'd say mostly it's been a few coaches as well. Keda and Paddy, Keda and Empoy and Paddy on this team. They've been really good for me. Um, just like like basically just a second opinion helps a lot yeah. Yeah. when you're doubting stuff and. It's been great to have those kind of people when I'm trying to do something in the video game. That's awesome. It kind of it kind of sounds like um, a little bit like an anime origin story where like you know this villain loses to this person or, or they're not a villain yet. They keep losing to this person and then eventually they become this villain and that's what it reminds me of. Like you're talking about, um, you have this very like yeah. this very core memory of going like zero and six or whatever it is against this team. That's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. Especially against Kern. I can totally imagine how insufferable he must be if you keep losing to him. Oh, I just remember, oh, Matt's Grace has been every shot against me. It's ridiculous. Oh, that's so Matt's awful. Oh. Top right or top left, he had insane shooting. Yeah, that is too funny. Well, as you 
walked into, you know, getting a little bit more serious about competitive. You said it was around the 2020 time. Obviously, we had COVID hit. We kind of go online, RLCSX. We've got a lot of changes in the landscape for RLCS. Are there any players or teams that you looked up to or maybe kind of modeled your play after or, um, you know, individuals that inspired you even? I know we talk a lot about how dominant um, the French scene is at the moment, and I think a lot of people credit that to some of the French excellence early on, KDOP, Fairy Peak, Farah, Chaussette, et cetera. So are there any players like that that you look that you have uh, looked up to since you got into the competitive space? Um, I'd say I haven't really, I haven't really, um, what you call it, like looked up to any players who are like old, not yeah. old, or veterans. <laughs> <laughs> you can say old, you can say it, it's okay. No, you know what, like, I don't know, the age thing, it's like, if you're not like 20, like, isn't something to do with science where like, um, you don't like start losing reaction time until you're 24. So I honestly think the, the age thing isn't really yeah just it's overblown it's just, isn't it yeah it is but um yeah the, i haven't really looked up to many veterans except uh i'd say i'd say astral like uh astral like astral's 50s honestly okay. were just amazing uh at how uh something i like incorporated into my like gameplay at how like always used to spam these like off the backboard passes so like mm -hmm. if he had like a 1v1 or something he'd do like a bounce dribble hit it off the backboard someone's behind him and it's just a free goal yeah, that's also something. Uh, obviously, Joy was fucking. Oh, sorry for saying, but oh, you're fine. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Joy's mechanics, obviously, crazy. Yes, uh, I always look up to trying to do something stupid in game. Obviously, <laughs> you can see in my uh, Formula One care, you know, I kind of clipped on your team, but it's okay, still lost. Um, but yeah, I'd say it's just mainly those people. I'd say Rise, Rise is mental as well. Mm -hmm. His leadership, his ability yeah. to lead, lead the players on the team is also insane. It's something yeah. I currently trying to learn and improve on. That's so awesome, man. Those are some great names and, um, and skills too that you mentioned. I love that you are not strictly focused on like flashy and advanced technical mechanics, right? Like you, you mentioned 50s, you mentioned the mentality that just that competitive drive, that killer mentality that Rise has, ice cold. I mean, uh, you know, it's so impressive to me that that is just him no matter where you plug him in, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's one thing when you have a good team environment, like with two players that maybe you've built a lot of team chemistry with or a coach that you love, but you plug him in anywhere and it's that same yeah. calm, collected composure, um, just really excellent. So I think that's mm -hmm. a, an awesome thing to a, a, aspire to be. It's a good thing you took the 50s from Astral and the mentality from <laughs> Rice and not the other oh, way around. No, no Astral's got a great, great mental. He's got a great mental. Um, I'm sure he's working on it. Okay. <laughs> so, um, you know, we talked about this a little bit beforehand just to give you an idea of what we're going to say. But there has been a lot of negativity around Rocket League and now that has kind of seeped its way into RLCS as well. Um, we had the long off season. And one thing that I do want to highlight or praise is Psyonix throwing some funding to um, tournament organizers. You even mentioned one there with your tryouts with the, the uh, what was it, Rising Stars Odyssey tournament. Uh, we had a couple of well, yeah. they were flipping spin land. So they had some stuff going on, but we did have that extended off season. And I think the big problem was we didn't know when it would end. We didn't know mm -hmm. how it would end. We didn't know what next season would look like. You guys didn't know when the roster lock was. I mean, hell, we didn't even know you know, a month before they announce, they actually say, well, hey, we're actually going to let 13-year-olds play. Yeah. Like you guys didn't know anything. And so that was, in my opinion, and it's problematic, that that communication needs to be better. And then we roll into the season, and they announce it, and there's obviously been some questionable changes. We'll just keep it light like that with, you know, format, qualification, um, even trimming some spots from EU and NA as far as international representation. Yeah. How, you know, how do you, do you, does any of that bother you at all? Are you, do you care about any of that? Or do you just continue to stay focused and grind the game? Like what is your opinion or your perspective towards that stuff as a professional? Yeah. So obviously when they announced the new season, the new format, Twitter is just, was just full of <laughs> hatred. Um, yeah. But for me, like I was, I was like upset, obviously like anyone sure. was um announcing everything so late um I, I was, one thing that also affected some people was they just 
randomly announced that managers and coaches have to be 18. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I was just upset. Maybe after a couple of days, I was just like, can't do anything really, can I? Right. So just focus on what I want to do. Uh, I won't be able to change it. My mm-hmm. uh, Even when Farah won the back-to-back, I think, with Casey, yeah. he made a tweet, tweet, nothing's happened, so what am I going to do? <laughs> um, <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, but I can imagine that if you're trying to stay focused and all this stuff happens around you and you're one of the more, you know, rookie players coming into sure. it, you, you've not been around for that long mm-hmm. and all this is happening, it can distract you, doesn't it? Can't it? Yeah, it can, it can, but at the same time, uh, my mindset is just <clears throat> can't do anything about it. So yeah. just stay what I want to do and try and achieve something well. Hopefully the RLCS is still a thing. Yeah. 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 Man, I, I think that is, like you said, there's really nothing else you can do, right? Obviously, yeah. you know, getting upset about it is is valid, of course, but it won't solve anything, right? And I think, you know, from an old 31-year-old man here, Seamus, uh, I think that is uh, <laughs> incredible wisdom to take into the rest of your life, actually. You know, there are going to mm. be things that happen that you can't control and you can't do anything about it. So, you know, you just keep trucking and do the best you can. So, I think and you just great. have to wait and see. And yeah. also it looks like it's going in the right direction because yeah. now we have the location for the second major before the first major has happened. Yeah, so, you know, good. that's that it's something. Yeah. And the decal. The decal is yeah, nice. That's looks right. good. Yeah, yeah I, I, you know, to flash back to the beginning of the question, I do think that a lot of the frustration from, like, the casual side of the game or just, like, the in-game stuff has spilled over into Rocket League mm-hmm. uh, or RLCS. I mean, I think a lot of people... There's, there's obviously severe overlap with community um, like creators and whatnot and, and RLCS. And obviously we have not had the most updates. We have not had a lot of communication as far as the game goes. And I think that frustration built up. And then so the smallest issues for RLCS, you know, uh, we're seeing just huge yeah. explosions of frustration where I think it's not, all of that frustration is not just for RLCS. I think some of that frustration is is from Rocket League game as well. Yeah, that's true. Like um, I think the biggest issue has been for Rocket League is just um, trying to, like add new stuff, try yeah, that's change right. something. It's been a problem for maybe as far as I can remember. Yeah, <laughs> yeah forever. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. One know. of the but funny that, things that's wanna... come up recently is um, people people asking like, "What would you do?" And I, I've seen the the Team Q Club Q thing, and it's crazy because you can go back to Reddit in 2016 and past. She's asking for that. Yeah. 2016. You know, we're looking eight years later, and we're still asking for the same thing. So. <laughs> yeah. Goodness yeah. gracious. I, I want well, to talk about the, yeah. your split as well, Seamus, because you've had wins against Moist, Top Cougars, Endpoint, 100%. You know, you've you've beat some solid, solid teams, mm-hmm. and you've had uh, an average rating of 1.05, which is the 15th highest worldwide <laughs> and the fourth highest in Europe. I mean, yeah. talk to me. What what happened? What happened to split? <laughs> Just played my game in it. Like I can't really say anything else. Um, maybe maybe stat padded a couple of times. <laughs> some, some goals, I mean that happens to everyone. Everyone does. But, but what, what made you go from from the off season from last year into this season with? And, and you know, I, such I, I want to say too, like in a, a landscape of Europe that is also improving. You know, we saw so many yeah. teams getting stronger and and like talent um, consolidating. I couldn't think of the word. And, I, and on top of that, a huge surge of rookies, right? We had a seven, six, seventh month off season and a lot of new players, mm-hmm. um, you know, making their way into the RCS mainstay. So like, like Ian said, what was the, what do you think is the biggest? What happened from, from, from last year to, to now? Um, I think it's, uh, if I was to be completely honest, don't really know, but I'd say one of the big factors is, uh, there's like the, How'd you say it? I feel like in Europe, there's a common mentality of, I want to try and actually win. And I uh, like, and then in America, it's just like, uh, it's seen as cringe for wanting to win. I Preach, kinda, brother. Preach. Um, it's just kind of what I've noticed with all these like bubble players. I'm not going to name any names. Sure. Um, but obviously, there, there are examples. Uh, but I feel like, in Europe, there's Vatiera, who's 
tweets like he's like a main character but he's <laughs> yeah, actually anime yeah. villain so, <laughs> so you can't really villain. say anything you know it's it's i think what that's what uh, a lot of bubble players who like become good now at the game have yeah. like um added to their mental and just maturity really yeah let's say it's europe just... is more mature it's like a America it's like well. the concept of like by any means necessary i want to freaking win yeah. and i'll do it however i need to do it it doesn't yeah. matter if it, you know people are laughing at me i need to win i mm-hmm. i am so glad that you said that i could not agree more <laughs> i could not agree more yeah i mean how, how do you see the new generation in europe because i, I said fourth highest rating I, I mean fourth highest rating with within the rookies in rss mm-hmm. right now right the next up as we call it with shift. So how do you see the new generation coming in? Um, I'd say the new generation is a, a lot like really mechanical. Mm-hmm. Like it's just, you kind of have to all like a lot of the players, including myself, just need to actually learn how to play the game mode still. Um, not, in a, not in a harsh way, but there's still like, I, yeah. uh, there's still a lot of things I still have to learn um about just how to play how to think um all the mechanical stuff is all sorted i'd say but it's just the hardest bit is actually learning how to perform on the day learning how to uh think and all that stuff really i'd say that's the most important thing absolutely there's a lot more to being a competitor and a winner than just being mechanically talented and you know you're mentioning some of these things like what meta and devo brought to your teams in the past you know some of the things that you're um, you know, you admire about like rise personality. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, and even hear your answer too, as far as like why you think, or, or what you think changed from last season, this season, or, or, or part of what helped, I guess, um, just that mentality of like, by any means necessary, I want to win. I want to learn. I'm, you know, I'm hungry. Um, I think that that shows a level of humility and, you know, just, a, a, um, I think that it, it's just, it's a very good quality for a competitor to have, because when, I think when you, when you lose that, like a, a, a super important part of the puzzle is missing mm-hmm. um, because we've seen, you know, there, there are plenty of examples of players that are extremely mechanically talented that unfortunately did not reach the heights that they probably could have. But then like you think about the flip side of it um, in the past, there was a spot on teams for players that were a leader and they may have been the weakest link but you can't do that anymore, right? Like teams yeah. can't afford to have a weak link. So you've got to have the total package. Um, mm. And like you're saying, you know, a lot of the new coming players do have those mechanics. And as you continue to learn you know, the competitive side of things, mentality, and of course the strategies and tactics and, and whatnot. Um, when to how do you think, week. how do you think you're really learning those skills then? Cause the pros mostly play twos, right? In the ranks. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's what you probably mostly do and yeah. free play and stuff. But th- that's all much more on the mechanical side than on the side of skills like communicating and performing on the day. And how do you actually practice those things? Um, I'd say what, what I still, I probably should be doing more, but just watching pro replays um, mm-hmm. really right. helps. Uh, even though you don't really know what to think, you can kind of tell by how, just the way they move and yeah. everything like that. And I'd say also a big thing would be um, having two scrims, two or three scrims in a day and calling those kind of like tournament scrims. So you don't go in trying to improve or or anything because that's what the other scrims are used for you. You go into replays, you look at what you think you should do better, what you could learn. Um, You use those scrims for that. But like a specific day, maybe a specific scrim, you go like here, let's just try and win the scrim. Yeah, full lock in and just try and win. That's yeah. it, because that could help. Practice a lot like turning that switch on, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, it's like it's like um, I'd say it's like what like uh, like professional athletes do as well. Like in in practice, they'll like up the intensity, try and make it feel mm-hmm. like uh like an actual game, so they yeah. won't feel the nerves and just feel like excited to play instead. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I love that. And then That's obviously, cool. I mean, uh, you know, no. No revolutionary take here, but of course, just more reps in the like in the main event, right? Like yeah. as you, I'm sure, whether you realize it or not, qualifying a couple times last year, r- kind of rewired things, and like you have a new level of confidence, right? Like you mm-hmm. you expect this of yourself, whereas before you qualified twice, you probably might expect this of yourself, and now that yeah. you've qualified three times, 
that bar has been raised again and um, yeah. and you get those reps in 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 the Swiss and in those different environments where maybe you come off a tough a tough loss and you got to bounce back or a dominant win and you got to stay focused or whatever it may be it's also like um even the the first regional this this split uh I was 0 and 10 in series right yeah. Um, so that played a huge factor in my nerves, I'd say against Moist, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I was nervous against Moist because they were like by far the favorites, obviously yeah. after, um, the joy of Resinoli. Um, but like, I'd say what hurt us the most, we should have made top eight in the first region, but what hurt us the most is after winning that series, the adrenaline dump, the f like, yeah. finally, like, finally, I won a series, you know, right. we're all so hype. I lost my voice. The second and third tiers, I was terrible comms because my my throat was just like it was hurting so much because I was screaming so loud after I beat Moist. Yeah, um, but that that like after that, it was just and it helped us learn to. That's like, right. You, know, you can't and get too excited after winning. That, that's right. That is a valuable rep. Like you went through a situation that maybe you weren't familiar with before, and now you've been there, you've dealt with it, and next time that you're in a situation similar you're better prepared to deal with it. That's the thing that I think a lot of us as community members, when we're doing all our yapping, we don't really understand that, you know, it's not just as simple as this player is a higher rated twos MMR and this team is higher rated and they should win. It's not that simple. There's, there's yeah. a lot that goes on to it. It's and also, I, I, it also ahead. happened with uh, when Queso made the grand final, they had yeah. to do uh, two best of sevens. Cause mm -hmm. I used to speak to them a good bit, like Rise and Joyo. And after they won, everyone was like so ecstatic. And the only, I, don't, I think, I could be wrong here. It could be the other two as well. But I heard, like, I think I just remember Rise being, like he said that he was the only one who was like calm. Yeah. Everyone was like going up to try and hug him. And he was like, lads, it's not over. Let's, right. let's win the other one. Obviously, yeah. shame it didn't happen. But True. if it did, that would have been like a really crazy story. He's him. just always been ice cold, huh? He's been ice cold since the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, yeah. Well, um, final thing here, and we'll let you go. We appreciate you carving out some time for us. Aspirations for the rest of the season and beyond. What does the future hold for Seamus? Um, I'll see. Take it. Take it. One. What's what's the saying? One step. One, <laughs> one step, step at a time. One, one step at a time. Yeah. yeah. You know, try to get top eight. Try to get top four. Try win. Try make majors. Just see what happens. I don't really. I just want to win. Just want to win. Simple as. Simple as. Yeah. Simple as. Yeah. Just want to win. Okay. That's a a great way to close things out. Seamus, actually, final question. Say your name for me. Seamus. 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 Okay. okay. There we go. Lithuanian, isn't it? Just not Seamus. Just not Seamus, bro. Just not Seamus. <laughs> Rizzo, Rizzo was saying Seamus. It annoyed me too much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think i mean i think rizzo was trolling i don't know but i hope so um Simas, <laughs> thank you man i appreciate Simas, you making some time yeah. for us um i want to say congratulations on the uh, on the split as well obviously an improvement thank on you. last season continue to to do your do your thing and and, and work hard I, I love where your head is at i think um you know if you if you do all the things that you that you are saying right now i think you've got a long successful career ahead of you uh we appreciate uh, you again for carving out some time and We'll catch you next time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. We're going to jump into the next segment. And we actually had Michael join us here. He's going to jump in for the remaining sections, uh, uh, bits of the podcast here. Hello, buddy. So, Don't think go the whole time without seeing me. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're not going to get away with it. Um, we've got some important stuff at hand, obviously. Major in Copenhagen coming up soon. And we're going to give you all of our takes regarding each and every region our top four. We've got some fun stuff today. So first, let's just start with European projections. Would anything but a win be a disappointment for Carmen Corp? Yeah. I'll go first. Oh, uh, you go, you go, you go. I'll say, from a community standpoint, I think no. Um, are there going to be people that criticize? Of course, but I think uh, the wider community. You know, if they go grand finals, if they go top four. I don't think that's that big of a deal. Top four? Yeah. But you for Carmen Corp, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I haven't seen a bracket they're not, yet. They're, 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 the the thing is, five. like, obviously they have done something incredible, <clears throat> winning all three, but they're not unbeatable. They're just not. You know, I, I, I think... I don't know if we're just... We have been spoiled, I guess, with, like, incredible success stories lately. Gen G, Fall, 
last year, Vitality, yeah. Spring. But like the, these feats are phenomenal. It, it's like, I know it's occurred a few times recently, but it is extremely difficult. And BDS is on their on their uh, tail. I think G2 and Gen G have the talent to compete with these teams. I think General Mates and Vitality can beat them. I think Falcons mm -hmm. could beat them. There's a ton of incredible talent at this. And I'm not saying I'm predicting those things to happen. Mm -hmm. But I think, uh, you know, a 4-3 overtime loss in Game 7 to BDS to go to the Grand Finals, I don't think that's that big of a deal. But my yeah. second take is, from Carmen Corp's perspective, I think absolutely. I think they'll be very disappointed if they don't take home the crown. I mean, yeah. it sounds very reasonable what you just said, but Garmin Corp top four, I think we're witnessing the first hot take from Hootie. <laughs> yeah, that's like not fence sitting at all. You know, you're saying, like to me, I don't know if you guys have been looking at bracket predictions or I know like all the all the content creators are doing it, a lot of yeah. fans are doing it. 98% of them that aren't like yeah. hope brackets or hopium brackets <laughs> have Carmen Corp at least in the final, if not winning. Um, I think... I think you're right in the sense that like we shouldn't like pressure we shouldn't put pressure that they have to make the grand final. It's like top four is good, but I think for a team that holds themselves to as high a standard yeah. as yeah. Carmen Corp does and who has outwardly come out there and said we wanted three for three, we want to mm -hmm. be the best player in the world. Fitzira has always said I want to be the best player. I think to them and to everybody else, they've shown us that when they're playing their game, they cannot be beaten as currently constructed versus the currently constructed teams. So I would feel like they would have to play worse than they actually have to not at least make the grand final, which in turn, I believe, would make it a disappointment because it wouldn't just be that they finished out 4-3. It would be that they probably wouldn't look as good as we remember them online, and that would then bring the questions of, is this a LAN team, a Tao who hasn't won a LAN yet? Would, you know, he would get the blame for it, rightfully or not, right? Because Vitir and Rise have already... You know, yeah. no matter how good or bad they play, people just blame the player who has who's won the least, no matter what. In, yeah, that's true. In sport. Um, so I think the grand final, I think if they don't make a grand final, like there's going to be a complete narrative shift in this Carmen Corp team. And I think they need to make the grand final. To yeah, they need to make the grand final. on a hot seat, which is ridiculous. You know, like how good do you have to be to like not to make top four, losing seven to probably eventual champion. And people are like, they're washed. But, I mean, now yeah. with the Landon 3.0 announcement, mm -hmm. Fatera mm -hmm. and Rise are fired up mm -hmm. to, you know, to show that they're in the top form that everyone believes they are. So, yeah, if they don't make the grand finals, I mean, they're going to be very disappointed. The community mm -hmm. at large may, you know, think their thing, but the KC fans will be extremely disappointed. Yeah, they will be in that finals or there's a problem yeah i mean i don't disagree i think <clears throat> it's funny because you're, you're saying the hot take and and this is more of me just fence sitting <laughs> you know like with the, it's, it's offensive just like that but, it's become not offensive wow. yeah exactly <clears throat> it's impressive to the, 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 it's just like this whole and it's not just us you see it in sports as well but mm -hmm. we we just like we crave the extremist take. You know, mm -hmm. we, we crave that, like, uh, bombastic, like, the one -liners. old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and so, you know, like, saying Carmi Corp has to win or it's a failure, that's what everybody wants to hear. But I just don't see it that way. I, I definitely don't. Especially because, like, they, I, I, what, again, what they, have, what they have done is unbelievable. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But, like, they're just not unbeatable. I mean, we, we've yeah. seen them lose to teams that are not those top four teams. Yeah. So, well, yeah, Sunday they makes so, the land. They have so, so much to carry in terms of their entire, you know, image. If, they if do, the absolutely. Other, if the other French teams don't make the top four, then that's sad, I guess, but that's whatever. But Carmen Corp has shown that they can win against all the others. Yeah. So now they have to do it on Sweet. land. I mean, that's just what they have to do. I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree with you there. I think that specifically Rise, um, but I think this team in general over the split, the Rise over his career, this team in general over the split has shown that when pressure and expectations get higher, they mm -hmm. they usually meet it. Yeah. Um, and obviously the on stage is different, but we at least have two out of the three players on the team, like proven they can get it done at the highest level. Uh, at least to get to that final. I mean, Rise, you know, he almost he makes almost every grand final of every land he, he goes to. Um, and Vitira is obviously a two-time land champion. Um, I think that 
like I said, I guess um, I I personally am of the belief that they will win if they play the way they play, like online. So, like I said, if they don't make top top two, I think it's going to be more of what was wrong with them. Why did they look like that? Than just yeah, like exactly. they were out top four, like they suck. You know, like I think people are going to be like that wasn't the Carmen Court, remember? Or at least the people with like good faith arguments, like people with right, bad faith right. arguments are going to be people with bad faith yeah. arguments. But I think people with good faith are going to be like. What the hell happened? Like, why they look like this? I can't see them playing the way they did online and not making the grand final. I guess. I mean, what kind of happened, of course, is that they're gonna meet their nemesis team in mm-hmm. the, the quarterfinals or, or the semifinals, and that's gonna be like a fury the of actual voice. grand yeah. finals, as people will refer yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, th- that oh, the ultimate happen. Vatira cope. Every time he loses, it was actually the grand final. Yeah. I mean, it Every does sometimes loses. happen. It does sometimes <laughs> happen. I didn't want to say that for the fall major after it happened. They were like, well, <laughs> now Moist is going to win because they beat KC and they lost. So right, yeah. Okay. I mean, no, yeah, obviously it's it's copium to a certain extent, but th- it does happen that the no, two no. favorites meet up in the semifinals. Mm-hmm. That, yeah. Like Worlds last year, Car- before. Carmine Vitality was the grand final, even though it was the semifinal. Like, right, it yeah. It split BDS. Yeah, so that kind of scenario, if it happens again, then you could say there is a way for KC to lose in uh, a match before reaching the Grand Finals and, yeah. you know, it being kind of justified or, like, you can yeah. explain it away it's still, in, with a good faith argument. But It's still yeah. definitely like a... It's like you fell short of the goal. You know, there's no denying right. that. I think um, especially when you are, like undoubtedly the favorite you know mm-hmm. nobody else has done what they have done they're in the strongest region um at least at the very top mm-hmm. and like yeah i mean i guess you could even say it's an expectation to win yeah. i just i just understand that you know things don't always go according to plan and yeah i mean look the reality is like if vitality shows what we know they can do i think they're on equal footing I know yeah. they haven't, and I'm not saying that I'm predicting them um, to show that form. But if they do, then I think they can definitely give KC a run for their money. Yeah, I well. <laughs> we'll get into this later, but I am actually like the more and more that I think about this, I'm really high on this Falcons team. Um, mm, I, I'll, we'll I'll learn, learn a little bit about the Falcons. I'll save it. But I'm, I'm really high on that team. Well, we'll we'll beat we'll beat on this horse all day. So yeah. let's just jump to the next one. We got BDS. Can they get over the hump in Copenhagen? I'm going to be honest. I am not really sure what that hump would be in Copenhagen. I think BDS, um, you know, top eight, top four is like acceptable. Um, I'm sure that they would not feel that way. They probably want to go grand finals. They probably want to win. Um, But there, like I said, there are a lot of just really, there's about, there are eight to nine team, eight, eight, nine, 10 teams here that are just absolute class. You know, mm-hmm. I think Falcons Furia are class. I think all four squads from Europe are class. The top two in NA are absolute class. The next two, I'm not saying that they aren't good teams, but I wouldn't put them in that S tier with yeah. everyone else. With that said, they do have upset ability. Same with complexity, I would say. Same with rule one. Um, and so, you know, for these, like this is, I know that they are impressive, but this is not going to be an easy feat for any of these squads. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've seen a, a couple of those tier lists, and that's a little better way of visualizing how good the teams can be than just making up a bracket sure. because then you have one-on-one matches and yeah. tiers make it a little bit more clear how you actually rate those teams uh and then of course you get quite a few teams in that s tier bracket yeah. for yeah. for a lot of people I, I would say that carmi corp are above that you could I say agree. they're s plus yeah. um but there there's teams like bds who would fit in an s tier and then there are other teams in that s tier bracket that they can lose against yeah, as the esteemed uh, writer of the of the top of the shift cast topic sheet, the hump is that big blue wall that, um, uh, and not even just that big blue wall, sure. but specifically the engineer, the architect, the mastermind of the big blue wall, because BDS has been absolutely stumped by that genius that stands above the three Carmen Court players for almost <laughs> a calendar year now, right? Uh, I think Monkey Moon has now lost to Farah seven straight times i want to say or even mm. maybe more i just brutal think back to spring regional three um so the hump is that the hump is that there seems to be a coach that just understands how to beat this system that has long been an elite system in 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 rocket league um to me personally i i am a little bit the more i grind the all six 
you know, that's like the, the tape. Um, I am more and more down on BDS, especially after their last performance. Um, but I will say what I did notice, I have noticed watching back some of the things, is that they are an incredibly tough team to predict what they're going to do, not just series to series, but game by game. I think people don't remember uh, they were absolutely shellacked by Gentlemates, the first regional. They didn't do great in the second regional. I believe they, they went 3-1 or 3-2 in the second regional. And they almost got kicked uh, in Swiss, I should say. And then in Open Qualifier 3, they almost didn't make bracket as well, I believe. So they are just such an up-and-down team. And so I, I don't think this is the time they'll get over the hump. Um, I'm not sure if there will be a time. They, I mean, they'll eventually beat Carmen Corp at one point in the best of five or best of seven or something, uh, I would assume. But... I just don't see it being this time. I think yeah. that they are a little bit mental blocked when it comes to some of the like that team specifically. I mean, this yeah, is a, this is a place scared. Yeah, mm-hmm. and this is a tough place to do something like that to, mm-hmm. to like take it to the next level, right? Especially when you have a, a newer player too, where you know Drawley's obviously been incredible, but this is another new thing that he's going to have to go through and, and experience. So, and I mean, it's not saying they can't, but this would not be the prediction. Or the time to predict um, them overcoming that demon. So yeah, yeah, and and the narrative around Rally is that he might struggle on land because mm-hmm. he he hasn't. No, I don't believe it. When's the, the last time yeah. a rookie? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm with three. you, Michael. There, we we've seen this time and time again where these rookies, especially in Swiss. Well, yeah, they got they got time to settle in, mm-hmm. time to bounce back. Yeah, and dude, but like they're just fine. the new players are just a different breed. Mm-hmm. They're just they're not like. I don't know. They they're not scared, you know. These yeah. players are not intimidated by the long-standing um, pros. They're they're. It's like they're ready to knock them off that pedestal. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, they're, it's not sure. like they want to bow down to it. They want to knock them off. Yeah. Speaking it- of the legacy, we got LAN environment return to form for Vitality or no? Um. Well. I think that they're going to look better than I think a lot of people think they are. I know Jens is firmly on the vitality is terrible and should disband and actually the org should, <laughs> no, the org so. should go I heard him say that verbatim. And they actually. should sell Zyro. Right. Um, but um, I think for me, I think it, at LAN, um, it's a like, I think your mechs go down. And everyone always says like the mechanical sure. ceiling kind of goes down on LAN. I think vitality will initially have issues because they've relied so much on solo plays uh, compared to the rest of Europe. I still think they need more team play than any other region in the world. Um, but I think, for me, it feels like they're going to kind of have a similar performance to what they did in the Open Qualifier 3, which is start shaky, or not start shaky, come out, blitz, completely blitz like the Swiss, I would, I would assume. And then run into a team that is maybe like on at a quarterfinal in a semifinal that is just so hot and they, you know, they just lose. Because to me, there seems to be some like fundamental issues that they haven't figured out in their play style that I think they can overcome in a best of five, especially early when other teams are getting used to it. And they're looking, they're gonna have so much confidence going back to land because like this is where they shine. They're two time land winners, they haven't lost the land in so long. And ROCS land, obviously they lost flip and spin in the offseason. And I think they're going to be able to have sail into the, you know, the 2-0 round, maybe 3-0, if not 3-1. But once they meet a team that's settled in and is just as confident and saying, let's go, let's go get these guys, um, I think that's what they're going to hit in those issues that plague them early in uh, the regionals and even against Carmi and Open Qualifier 3 where they kind of let that series slip through their hands in the final. Um, I think those, those, those like very fundamental errors in rotation and communication are going to eventually come back and bite you when the margins get as thin as they get on those champ Sundays. So I think that yeah. they're going to still be a top four team, top eight team, but I can't, I can't break them to win. Yeah, totally. That, there's eight teams needed to be eliminated on Friday, but for them, it shouldn't be an issue of surviving Friday. Mm-hmm. They should be one of those teams to be able to make it to Saturday. Uh, quite handily, but then indeed you're running into brackets where if you maybe didn't win 3-0, uh, you're going to have a little bit of a tougher quarterfinals and that could be tough already, but I can absolutely see them going to the semifinals too. I mean, they're still, they have Zen, uh, they're still Vitality and, you know, it's it's hard to predict 
really hard against them. <laughs> I do think this split, these three open qualifiers, they just haven't looked themselves or they've been figured out. I don't know exactly where the tr troubles come from, but they haven't been able to fix their play style or fix their results in a way that's satisfied me to say they're going to be like one of the favorites. I don't think mm -hmm. they will be, but yeah, they should still be easily placing into that, into the players bracket. Yeah. I mean, I totally agree. I don't, I don't really have anything to add. It's just a team that we've seen have a ton of success, a little bit of a slow start, slowly climb their way towards the proper form. So it's hard to, you know, hard to say, yeah, that's for sure. Top four team, but um, definitely have that ability. We've seen it in the past. Now, let's talk about mates. Are they underrated, overrated? I think, I mean, at this point, I think they've just pr been properly rated. You know, I feel <laughs> like um, at the beginning of season, we obviously had all these questions, us here included, myself, mm -hmm. um, and obviously the community too. And that event one goes goes off and, and, and they go crazy. And then, you know, those, those ratings go. Um, and then obviously event two and event three, things kind of settle in. So I feel like they're, you know. I think everybody at this point would probably have them as that fourth best team from Europe. And I think that's probably about what they are. I think they've got a very high ceiling that can compete with any team in the world. Um, but I don't always expect them to play, you know, close to that level. So I think um, similar, um, you know, round five, top eight, potentially top four, even grand finals if they're playing well. But um, I mean, I, I, at this point, it feels like they're pretty, pretty properly rated. Yeah, but even though you could say they're the fourth team out of Europe, it would still, I think, be a massive disappointment for them and for mm -hmm. whoever rates yep. them to not make those playoffs. And even yeah, though they're the fourth best team, all yep. four should be able to get to that top eight, and then we'll see. Then we'll yeah. see who they match up with, how it happens, um, if they run into one of the other European teams, you know, mm -hmm. everything. And how happen. they're playing. Because they can be and how they're playing. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you need to get into an event like this. You can't be in the same form at the start as you are at the end that's mm -hmm. incredibly tough to do so there needs to be some kind of evolution throughout the event and when they are going to that three wins in the swiss stage you need to see something out of them yeah that gives you confidence and that gives them confidence that they can beat the teams that they're going to meet in that top eight in in the quarterfinals I, uh, I actually think they're a bit underrated i think the community is uh devalue them a little bit because of their performances in the last two regionals but i i, I want to go back to what uh, actually gregan said about them when we interviewed gregan if you guys anyone listening this is not listened to the last episode with gregan and relating we go go watch that wherever you get your podcast um but he talked about how they are the quintessential european rocket league team which is means that they are going to send the house they're going to trust their mechanics and they're going to try to force the issue on you steal your boost and make things as uncomfortable as possible i still think that 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 commitment to that style it does really well on land. I think we've seen it many times that these T European teams that are not seen as good because they, other teams they've been playing have a lot of tape on them, so they know they're going to come out and just full send. Um, you know, the, when, when they play teams at international tournaments where they're they're not as used to that, they struggle. Um, you know, I think about G1 uh, in the Winter Major. Uh, they should have been 3-0 in their group. They should they you know they did some silly silly finishes you know against G2 and and. And almost got swept by phase, but they were they were they were bringing the pain for a lot for large parts of those series. So I think that they're like by far like a very very strong top eight team. And I think when nerves get nervy and you've got Juicy and I'm uh, sorry Itachi and Seiko RLCS land winners, you know just like just pressuring the, the heck out of you against maybe some of the newer players like a Durali or a. Uh, you know, maybe, you know, G2 and their their kind of tendency to sit back a little bit when they get pressured. I think they could make top four, and I think no one's kind of, like, talking about that. Yeah. Um, but I think their play style is very conducive to, like, capitalizing off nerves, and I think lands about nerves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a fair point. And, and you're right in the sense that, like, if you look around at community brackets, community figures, um, mm -hmm. people are not – it's not very common to see Genomates top four. So mm. in that sense, um, especially like you're saying for the land specifically, they could be underrated. Um, so that Remind covers- Remember Remember yeah, Semper yeah, at yeah. Sweden? No one thought Semper was going right. in. Then they made top four. I think the that expectations are... are a little bit higher than, than what Semper sure. had, but sure. yeah, okay. I, I guess they could make a run like that. Mm -hmm. That covers our four European teams. Let's jump over to NA. 
And obviously, we got to talk about G2 first. How far will G2 go in Major 1? Um, I'm, I, you know, I'm saving it, saving it for our predictions, our official predictions. But I think well, how far I personally think they can. But I think if there's going to be a team that's going to beat Carmen Corp and win this thing, I think it's going to be G2. And the reason why, I have three reasons. Number one, experience. Uh, I think the best teams that are at this land are from Europe, but Carbon Corp has, one, a mental block over them, it seems like, and two, have a lot of experience playing them. They don't have that much experience playing G2, and sometimes that matters. Mm -hmm. The more you play a team, the more you understand them, and if you don't play a team that often, sometimes they can catch you off guard. Two, I think I think they have they are the only team in the world, and I'll go on record saying this, that's more talented individually than Carmen Corp. I think they're a more talented team. I think Daniel is, uh, outside of Zen and Nupo, the most individually talented player in the RLCS, more than Batira, more than Atau. I think Beast Mode has proven that he can, he has best in the world peak. He, he proved it at GTA 8. And I think Atomic has proven he's a major MVP and a world's finalist, the best player on a on a mini dynasty in G2. Um, and third, I think it's playstyle. I think G2 capitalizes off teams that want to uh, really aggressively pressure you uh, when they're playing well. When they're not, they just end up sitting in that and they get crushed. But when they're playing really well, it, they're great at luring you in, supporting each other in the, in the uh, sort of transitional parts of the game, and then just pouncing. As soon as you are, you know, you got two guys on zero and they're still upfield, it's just boom, boom, boom. Now Dan's in the air, Tom's pre-jumping, and they're, and they're going, going full confidence at you. So I think that they're the team that I'm looking at as a team that really has a lot of factors that can go into them beating the best teams from Europe and winning this whole thing. G2, the most talented team yeah, in the 100%. world. That, there's your hot take. There you have it. See you next <laughs> week. Wrap it up. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to see Atau, Atau do, you know, he had a super team and he couldn't make top three. Dan and Beast made top three and Atomic won a major with, like, less talented teammates. So I, I'd like to see that. And, you know, I don't know. You watch, I watch Daniel play sometimes and I'm like, this kid is just, he's like a maestro. He's that Nupo, like I said, that type of, type of thing. And a bulldozer yeah. like Kira run straight through you yeah okay but there's more to rocket league than mechanics even though it's an important part of the game but sure to you <laughs> not to me cool cool jump. this is not like that take <laughs> you'll see you'll see i love to Big see Dan, some man. Teams doing no well hey listen i'm not being biased either because i didn't even i said daniel's better than first killer like you gotta understand like i'm not being biased this is an objective right. i watch yeah, him play yeah, yeah. i said he's be hey. not better than Zen. They definitely are very talented, and I think – I don't think that's as hot of a take as it will be received as. Yeah. It's just because people hate Dan for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. There's, there's that aspect of it, but it's also like it, they're NA players. Yeah. There's no – they can't be. All they're they NA. do is air dribble. Best players in the world are Europe. Maybe yeah. Mina. There can't be any NA players. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the six, the 16th best team in, in Europe would actually make major in NA, which is why right. the team yeah. with two European players yeah. didn't make major in NA. Okay, okay, okay. You've been on Twitter too long. But, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this right. is the week they're going to have to show it. They are. This is the they week are. that they're going to have to – See, let the world see what they can do yeah. individually and as a team, and mostly as a team, because right. they're going to come up against those European, more team-based playstyles, mm -hmm. and they're gonna have to do something with it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I don't, I don't mind the take because I, I, I like from an individual perspective and talent mechanics. Like, I don't think it's that wild, but I definitely agree with Jens. Like, that only matters so much. And then when you are, let's just say that take is true, and they slightly edge out. Um, the, the you know the the mechanics discussion over Carmi Corp. Well, does it matter if Carmi Corp is just so much more fluid yeah. and, and they're greater than you know for the sure. kickoff game yeah. is you know a much deeper bag. Um, like there there's there's a lot to it, and so um, yeah, I, I don't mind the take. As far as what I think about G two, I, I think they've got similar all the talent in the world. Definitely have the ability to be in that grand finals and potentially even win it, but I don't think that's what's going to happen. Um, I think. That NA and NA players are just in this weird space where, like, it's going to be really tough to overcome this community-wide narrative. Um, mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of pressure. They desperately want to silence this, you know, inferiority complex. You know, people starting to – I mean, I'm seeing – I'm not, I'm not saying everybody, but more and more commonly, I'm seeing, like, EU, MENA – in a Sam or EU Mina Sam in a, you know, I see these mm -hmm. things where, and, and I know that this bothers these players because 
I mean, everybody wants to, everybody wants to get that, the, the, the respect that they feel they deserve. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's just, you know, until the NA, a, a team or multiple teams can prove it by beating teams and winning events, there's going to be this extra little, you know, devil on their shoulders saying like, you know, you have to win this. There's, there's that little extra, um, and, and all these teams have their own little demons talking to their ear, you know, but, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's gonna be tough. Um, and as we've said, whether we're talking about KC or BDS or Genomates or whoever, there is a ton of talent here. You know, those European teams and Carmine Corp is not the only threat to G2. Yeah. I think Fury is dangerous. Falcons yeah. are dangerous. If they're not on their A game, Gen G so can obviously beat them. We saw that as well. So I don't know. I, I, I think, I, I, you know, I'll say I think I top four for G2 is where I'm, is where I'm like, if we can get there, I'll feel, you know, I, I'll feel good about that. Obviously, the like I said with the other teams, I'm sure the players want more, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'll say uh, top four for G2 for uh, for this event. Damn, if every team that has to make the top four makes top four, there's going to be a lot of yeah, teams in the top four. Six teams. We're going to have top nine four. top four teams. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, speaking of, you know, teams making top four, let's talk about Gen G. Mm. Um, my question for you guys is, you know, do you guys think that Gen G is going to consider continue to ascend from yeah. their improvement in the final open qualifier, or was that a fluke? And we'll see. Or will we see a regression to the mean? Um, no, I think I think they're going to continue on this trajectory. Um, I, I don't know that that necessarily means they're going to win this major, but I think that they will continue to play better. I think the first couple meetings with G two and those first qualifiers were what I would consider um, to be the outlier. You know, I, I don't think that was their good performances. Uh, or an acceptable performance for 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 that talent and that team. I actually, I do think that the G two roster is more talented, mechanics, whatever else. But I actually kind of like Gen G a little bit better. Um, oh yeah, I think, yeah. I think oh, I think I think Abjack. I, I think Abjack is um, a pivotal piece of that. I think the way that they work together. I think their team play. I mean, last year you heard FK on RLCS broadcast interviews talking about how the way Gen G played. Was inspiring them to change their strategies and and like think about how they play the game and you know now that he's joined that team and obviously brought that incredible level of talent that he has and you know it's taking some time you've got to work out the kinks they obviously skipped the off season so maybe there's a little delay that on working so those things dumb. out Can we all um, agree that that was dumb like looking back I mean, considering how long it took them to get I, to look work. obviously every team can make their choice they can do whatever they want but i, I if i were a competitor i would never have done something like that now look, maybe maybe it's like maybe it's a difficulty with travels and whatever else and and mm -hmm. whatever. But if I can play, I'm definitely going to try to do so. Yeah. Just get some reps in. I've it's a new team. Why not? But yeah, I like the Gen G team. I think they can play a style that more closely resembles what we see from a full team thing with Europe. You know, uh, heavily relying on passing plays, a very balanced style, not so much uh, solo effort. And I think that will yield better results on international stage, especially when sometimes the mechanics can be a little bit shaky, at least to start the event until you get kind of settled in. So I, I think Gen.G will continue to ascend right into the top four with everybody else. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's promising. <laughs> awesome. I mean, it's promising that they're on an upward trajectory, right? Yeah. That's the main thing that people look at and they think like, hey, then they can take a next step and become even better in, in Copenhagen. But, oh, Genji, if for me, when I was doing my uh, shift 16 uh, predictions, or predictions, I guess, contribution um, to the shift 16, Genji for me was the toughest team to place. Yeah. Uh, because I would have them below G2 mm -hmm. in the rankings if I, if I had to power rank them right now. But then where are they in the, in the rest of the world? I mean, I had them below three EU teams as well as G2 and Falcons. But honestly, it's so close. I, yeah. I didn't know where to, where to put them. Yeah. yeah. But I not in my they, top if they, if they had been a little cleaner and only lost to G2, I think it's yeah. a little more cut and dry. But they yeah. lost a couple other series, whether it's M80 or whatever else. And I think that is just... It just makes you like, uh, mm, right. I'm not sure. Right. Well, I, I, I like it. We're like, you know, I something am. that I think Greg and mentioned when we had them, mm -hmm. we're looking at like, not just, obviously we have to value the entire split, but we're looking at this. How are we moving as we walk into the major? 
and Gen G has been cleaning things up. And obviously this most recent event was their best showing yet. So, uh, and, and, you know, and this is just a personal feeling. I think those first couple meetings there with G2 was, I think that's very underwhelming. Like and I said, I think, an outlier. I think this is more likely, and I'm not saying that G2 is going to, or excuse me, Gen G is going to beat them every time, but I think this is more along the lines of what I expected of that, that, that squad. Well, I'm sure that they're going to be yet another team in the top four. And I'll tell you why, <laughs> because this, you know, Hootie talked about this uh, a few minutes ago, about how there's a, ch a little bit of a chip on the shoulder by a lot of these North American teams because of these ridiculous narratives yeah. that regions that they beat the breaks off every land are now better than them because, I don't know, they all lose to Europe. Mm -hmm. But this Gen G team is built for haterism. And I'll tell you what I mean by that, okay? G2, they're a bunch of really nice kids, and they practice their mechanics, and they listen to their coach, and they go out there and they play hard. Gen G, they hear all the noise. They're not just going there to win. They're going there to show everybody that they were all wrong. You know, Jack has got this nice guy, public figure <laughs> persona. In, I know every single one of those, oh, you just moved to NA to get free land spots. Oh, this, that, oh, this, that, PR Jack. I know he thinks about it. We already know First Kill is a demon on and off the field, okay? He's not, he, you can't talk to him, he'll talk back, which I love about him, right? He's a Seiko, he's not squishy, he doesn't care who you are. And Chronic, you know, I, I can tell Chronic's got a little bit of fire in him. I, I don't know what it is about him, but I can tell he's got a little bit of fire in him. And I think that they're going to take that passion that people have doubted them. Oh, G NA is a one team region. Oh, Europe's just so much better. I think they take that a lot more personally. They were boot camping at the Astralis facility. They wanted to be around greatness <laughs> already before they Astralis well, greatness. Former greatness. You know, it's like going to the coaches. It's like going to the pyramids. You know, it's like you know Egypt no longer a world power once was a world power with pyramids. You know, you got to see the, the esports history and, and feel it, take it in. Um, but I think that that's going to, I think that that edge that I feel like Genji has, that they, they they are coming there with something to prove about each each player individually and as their team that I really like, because I think that's they're going to feed off it well. We've seen it work for First Killer. We've seen it work for Jack, for Chronic. People doubt them. They perform best. I believe in you, Genji. Please don't let me down. We'll see if they can do it. <laughs> First Killer's definitely had, uh, you know, historically he's done well against European teams. Obviously, he's got a European uh, on Ooh. his team as well. I was, I was and, watching. And they, uh, you know, two two thirds of that squad has won an international major. Yeah, yeah that's um, right. Recently. That helps. So, you know, that that narrative that we talked about with some of the NA players and teams trying to get that that extra, you know, monkey off their back or whatever it is, they may not feel that as strong. So mm -hmm. we'll see if they can do it. Last but certainly not least, we've got LG and OG. Do they find a way to make it through Swiss? I think OG can. I, I really don't believe in LG, and I know they're a fan favorite. I know that they're like, and I, I like coming it. After Space, you. Spaceman, Corelli, they're doing one heck of a job in that team. Stream. I love watching that team. They absolutely are. Um, and, you know, they're, they're a team of people who seem, they, they take the game super seriously, they work super mm -hmm. hard, they deserve to be at the major. But if you look at the runs they've had in some of these tournaments and the teams they're losing to, Dignitas, NRG going five with the Muffin Men. I just can't take their resume at this point and put it with almost anyone else who's considered a top eight contender on, uh, you know, in, in at this land. OG now has dominated, like ever since they, you know, woke up in the middle of the season, woke up, dude. <laughs> have dominated everybody but G2 and Gen G. Yeah. So to me, that team, I think the way they play is very high, has a very high floor. They got yeah. experience. I think that they, they'll be able to take out teams who, A, are relying too much on their mechanics and aren't being able to harness sure. it on land. I'm looking at teams like Rule 1 or maybe Complexity. Um, I think teams that maybe are, uh, you know, overlooking them because that's, you know, something that teams do. They think they're going to walk past older players. But, you know, Mr. 99, Jacob Natman, he's not letting it go yet. Um, and so I think they could sneak in. You know, I think that last spot is, is probably between – uh, that eighth spot is probably between, I want to say, Rule 1, Complexity, OG, and, like, I, I, I'm going to say Power. They're, like, they got, like, they got 1% of the pie. Um, and I think they, they, they could be there. But I, I don't see LG doing much. I like the OG pick. I mean, you're right. They've woken up from their slumber, the granddads. <laughs> they, they, had a, they had a nap they had in, their, a in their lazy chairs. And... Uh, yeah, they might, you know, 
get their walking sticks out and uh, I'm ca I'm currently <laughs> I'm currently uh, wielding the OG flare in the shift court discord server uh, because you know I'm almost 27 I can relate so um official team of people who can rent a car that's, <laughs> that's right that's right you know I, I did a um I did a chat prediction yeah. today run, running polls in my stream mm -hmm. and um something that a lot of people were bringing up is they're all three land winners yeah yeah all three of them i mean it uh, helps it just helps heaps Calm, of experience legendary also, land winner well, yeah they've won like land so games. um you know what here's what i think and i'm gonna stick to my take like i said in the past i think we're gonna have three na three eu falcons and furia as top eight mm -hmm. so i think one of these two is gonna make it in um and then you know we talked about swiss no crowd unfortunately a bummer for these players but that means calm will just be that much louder. And, and Nolly is hey, not. Who gonna, knows? You know Nolly's getting in. Like you know, if calm start like leads off, Nolly's gonna start yelling too. K Nabs <laughs> might throw a little hockey chirp in there. You know, yeah. <laughs> all the dust. It'll be great. Now, I do. I do expect. I. I think both of them will be fighting for round five or or um, or top eight potentially. Uh, but yeah, I think I think it's fair what you know what you guys have said about them. You know, looking at the resume and. They haven't been able to overcome those top two in NA. It's going to be tough to say that they can compete with your, your S tier, your A tier at the tournament. Um, but we'll see how they go. South America, let's take a look over there. We've got two teams. Will the new look Furia reach the heights of the golden 21-22 campaign? Thoughts on Furia? Actually, quick question. Did you either of you watch the 2v2 between um, Ahmad Nupo and Lost Yan on Johnny's channel? I no, did not. But I did watch oh, them play my God. LG afterwards. Tell us, tell us about it, Hootie. I mean, I, I don't I don't have a large enough vocabulary to describe how incredible it was. I wish I knew more like fast, quick, uh, abrupt, speed, Mach 5. Like, can y'all help me? It was just so freaking fast, dude. And, and the thing is, is like you you might think like, okay, we toned down the technicality of mechanics. Like maybe we're not as super advanced. No, they're hitting like double tap, reset, slam to the top right. Like it is just unreal. Specifically Yana Nupo, just unbelievable talent. I'm so excited to watch um, these teams play. I, you know, I've said it, I'm, I'm high on Falcons. I'm high on Fury. I think those two teams from the, you know, regions outside of NA and EU, I think those are the two teams that I feel most confident about. Um, For sure. And, and I think... So what what is that top four? For them, I think to that's equal? our seventh team in the in the top four. <laughs> but, but, but to to, yeah. to, to I'm yes. saying to match what Fury did in the past is that what that would happen? Yeah, right. fourth at the yeah. World Championship. Um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say no. I think it's possible, but I'm gonna say no. Obviously, we got to draw a line, right? We can't have 20 yeah. teams in the top four. <laughs> I think you can say they, maybe say top no. four for a lot of teams. I think there's eight. I think there's seven teams that could that could make yeah. a top four. Yeah. And it'll just match up and, and but and I, I like what you said about all the, the speediness that you see in, in their two v two play. Of course it's two v two, so it's a different it's a di they also look at the game more differently. They just look at it from a practice point of view, right? They just yeah. see it as go, 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 go. It doesn't matter who your teammate is. Um but even without that, even in, in the three v three lobbies, Furia have so much Fury behind them. Yeah, they do. That, yeah, excuse the pun, but they are at, at the team, maybe the team that the European squads should be scared of because if you cannot keep up with them, they are going to get some crazy double taps. They are going to yeah. get some crazy, you know, wall reads into ceiling passes. I mean, they're just going to oh, go for it stuff. Yeah. And they, they are, they're so like, it's just a pure, like aggression, just pure aggression. You see them, like one of them picks the ball up into an air dribble bump. And then the next thing you know, there's one that's up in the air in front of him. You know, right. like it's just pure. Yeah, they do not care. And we talk about, yeah. we've mentioned a couple times here where a lot of times mechanics, when you get to land can be a little bit shaky. Not with this scene. We've no. seen Yan time and time and time again, when he shows up at land, he is just going to ball out. So I think this I think this team is definitely one to watch. It's going to be a ton of fun to see what they yeah. do. Um, I, I just want to say quickly, I want yeah. to show some love before we move on from Fury to Drafinho. I think in that role, I don't – maybe this is another hot take probably. I don't think there's somebody in the world that does his role better than him that isn't named Rise. 
I think he has does such a good job of controlling the pace of yeah. the game and letting equally posing a threat on his own, but also putting himself in a position where Yan and Loss can do what they do best without having to worry about like, you know, yeah. getting punished for it. Um, which is really similar to what I think Rise does. You know, just it's just yeah. controlling that midfield, controlling the game. I think, you know, obviously his his old teammates on crew are in different scenarios now, but they're not here. They weren't even close to making it. Right. And so for me, you know, for him to have made three lands last year with two teammates who have struggled and him pick up this Furia team that needed somebody and they're immediately the best team in the region, I think he's going to yeah. be, you know, really, really impressive. And I think people are going to remember why he was such a standout last year at this line. Well, what, are, what, are, what do we think about complexity? It seems like for the most part, um, they're kind of flying under the radar. You know, not many people are, are predicting them top eight. Um, obviously, they've had a decent split over there in Sam with the addition of Dorito. But what, what is our feelings? Uh, what's our feelings surrounding complexity for this first major of the RLCS season? I think they I have. Think, sorry, go ahead, yes. I don't think they're that far behind Furia. They're a team who maybe you know, haven't had Furious number, but sure. in terms of their playstyle, in terms of what they can bring to a LAN, they're not that far behind. I don't believe so. Uh, I have them only, only, um, uh, gentlemates. I have gentlemates in between the two in my power rankings. Yeah. I think they're close and yes, we should expect more out of Furia, but it doesn't mean that we can just count out complexity. I, I would say. I remember at the winter major last year, I was talking to, I don't know, I think it was Adam the, uh, about complexity. And I was like, would you be shocked if they got top four? And he was like, no. And I was like, would you be top shocked if they went out like 12th? He was like, no. And despite <laughs> changing, um, you know, a roster move and moving regions, I feel like I'm still in the same spot of complexity where they, they, they play a way that is like, I, I just, there's such a wide range of where they could be. Yeah. Like I'm not, they're not going to be the eighth team in the top four. Okay. But I will say that like, I think if they were to go and make a run, I'd be like, well, they have CR and, and, and Rays Bowl. And those guys were considered, you know, among the cream of the crop last year. And then they changed teammates. And all of a sudden we just started pretending that they weren't as good as they were. But at the same time, you know, they went out 9th, 12th of the world championship. They kind of threw both of the series they played uh, late. Uh, so, you know, I think it's, like I said, I've called them a silly team. I think they need to fix their silliness. I'm hoping Dorito can help them fix their silliness. Um, and it's been going well so far. Silly, yeah, if they can avoid the silly team antics at land, I, I, can, I can see them making a little run. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. We'll see. South America's definitely sending some of the top talent that they've sent, uh, some of the best talent, I guess, best couple squads that they've sent, uh, you know, as as one and two um, for a couple years, I would say. Strong as one and two, probably. Mm -hmm. Um Sam's always been funny because it seems like you expect one of them to do well, and then it's like the other one is. The it's team always Sam too. Yeah. Sam too. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see. Maybe complexity much. can uh, make that happen here. Let's jump over to Mina. Are Team Falcons serious contenders to make the major final? Yes. Yeah, hoodie. Take your take this because you've been talking. So about them all here's the thing. Talk, talk. The more that I think about this team, the more excited I am. TRK for what do we say two? three years now has just been widely accepted as like the player for Mina. I know mm -hmm. Nupo is a new addition and, and I'm sure there's some, some discussion there. Um, but TRK is a legend. He is incredibly talented. He has shown it at lands. He has shown it at home and he has done it with two players that I think are not as good as the two that are beside him now. And that's no disrespect to Amon and Khaled. They're obviously legends in Mina and, and still obviously ballers as well. They're here, but I do think that the twins are an upgrade. And then the Twins, as soon as they jump into the scene with a third, uh, whether it's Natter or Mawson, that is obviously an incredible player, but no one is talking about them on like the international level. And they mm -hmm. immediately begin to threaten Falcons, a team that has had a, that entire region on a chokehold for since its inception. And then they go to land, and you know everybody's asking the question, they finally make it there, what will they do? And they play well. You know, they, 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 they show what they're capable oh, of. So I look, I look at the Twins, and they show me what they're capable of at an international level. I look at TRK and their past teams, and now both of those pieces have upgraded, you know, coming together. And when they did, they did not slip in this uh, first split. Three for three. And, you know, I, it just feels like 
Mina has been nipping at the heels of EU and NA for so long. I know, like I said earlier, a lot of people are even rating Mina ahead of NA. Um, and I, I think there's a reason for it. It's because these guys are insane. They are so incredible. Um, I think the twins have just this crazy, I mean, it's just like twin chemistry, you know, they, 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 they do, they, they just, it's like a, you know, like a Their perfect, they, just, perfect they, they supplement too. one another. I couldn't think of the word. They yeah. supplement one another so well. Ruas defense is bar none the best in the world. Mm -hmm. Bar, it's not close. Yeah. And then you have weapons like Kaliers and TRK that are, you know, all three are so incredibly talented. And we haven't even talked about, you know, Ruas is a threat on the other side as well. Mm -hmm. I, I, I truly do. And, and the, th the thing that I notice about Mina is you look around and, and you ask questions about mentality in, but I don't, I don't think there's ever a question of mentality for Mina. Yeah. They just seem freaking stone cold. Nothing is going to shake them. They're here to win. They're confident. You hear them get loud. Ahmad gets loud. Uh, TRK gets loud. We've seen them TRK over at gamers eight, you know, he's chirping mm -hmm. at the other side. So I, I really do. I think that it's just been a long time coming. There's been a ton of talent in that region molding and, and preparing for that moment. And it just, to me, it just feels like this could be that moment. I have a question. Do you guys think that the Team Falcons that's going to represent Mina at Copenhagen is better than yeah. the Team Falcons yes. that represented them in London at the Spring Major in the Grand Finals against Moist? Relative it, to the that, time. I, I yes, relative that, to the that, time. That Spring Major team, Nupo was not allowed to play in RLCS, but was playing in RLCS and was taking series from them. Yeah. Like, if Nupo at two years ago, That's crazy actually, <laughs> two series two years ago was beating them, that team, that team made the major final. Think about it. Two years later, with better teammates, Nupo can't beat them. That's how good this team is. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if it's a hot take. You, you guys don't think so, but I, I, I agree. I, I think that this team is bringing something to the world stage. Obviously. Yeah. It doesn't mean that they're going to make the grand finals, but right. absolutely do they have the talent for it. Mm -hmm. So yes, you know, Hootie felt very strongly about Falcons, but I know you and I, specifically you, are proud card carrying members of Nupo Nation. Okay. That's right. So my question for you is is rule one and Nupo Nation closer to a round four exit, a one three exit, or a top eight qualification? Which one would you think is more likely? Mm. Ooh, I mean, I would say, but maybe that is a little bit opium. I, I don't think we can say that Johnny Boy is completely wrong and on his Mina opium, but there is obviously some opium in there because you don't know how they're going to match up against, uh -huh. uh, especially teams outside of EU, because EU, they're, they're a little bit closer there. They, North America. they know them a little yeah, bit better. But yeah, you're, the, the main contenders here that they're going to have to fight against to secure a spot in in the top eight probably are going to be teams from south america north america uh, those regions and then i would say that they are closer to a top eight qualification than to getting uh, losing in, in round four yeah i would agree i think like depends on the one obviously i think their their round five matchup i think like it, it's gonna matter a lot. Like if they get yeah, gemmates or they get like you know one of the teams that are considered a contender just like come out weak and they end up getting like Vitality or Gen G late. Like it's gonna be really tough. But even in that lower bracket, like in that round four, they could catch OG and OG could just like blitz them. Uh, I would agree with you though. I think they're close to the I, top I think that they're a round five almost guarantee. Yeah, I said yeah. it last week, but I think that the fate of rule one really depends on that round one matchup against gentlemates. Yeah, if they can. Good. Sorry? Sorry, I think Hoodie was... I think we cut, out, we cut off Hoodie twice, so I felt bad. Oh, no, you're fine. Go oh, sorry. We're rocking. Uh, I think that if they can win against Gentlemates in round one, then they have a much better chance yeah, of yeah. getting into, into the playoffs. E even if they like can't... Three, even like a 3-2 against Gentlemates, yes. I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because you're no. catching a lower team, an 0-1 team. That's right. In round three, and then... You know. Yeah. Yeah, all, all I was going to say is just with that question, I think, you know, I don't want to oversimplify it, but I would be surprised to see them lose in round four and i wouldn't be surprised to see them in top eight yeah great okay. way to put it that's you know not I mean? simplification that's just <laughs> brevity okay <laughs> uh but yeah i guess moving on let's talk let's go down under for a bit all right down let's head under. down to the land of the kangaroos got a new host hoodie okay oh, let's yeah. go 
You know, I, I think I, I like when we bounce it around. Like I agree. Yeah. Question. It's fun. But anyway, let's talk. Let's let's talk Aussies and let's talk power. So power three for three. You know, three for three. Three for three. Uh, in in the OC, something that Jens gives no weight to because he is disrespectful. Um, I am. But does, I will admit. So so my question for you guys. If power is power going to prove that they did more with this split than just beat up on weak teams, or are we going to be, or are people like Yan's going to be justified that they're simply the only competitive team in a very non-competitive region? Well, let, let me let me jump under this bus with Yan's so you don't get run over by yourself. I'm I'm right there with you, man. I I, I think I, I I know this sounds crazy, but I would have been more impressed if it was a good, strong competition between Pioneers, Power, and Chiefs. Mm -hmm rather than them just mowing the competition. Right, yeah. I, I think that w I would have been, if, if if they were threatened, if they, you know, maybe won two of the regionals and it was a tough fight to get that second regional to secure the one seed, I would have been more impressed. But it just, and, and this is, it's sad because I'm sure it's annoying to hear from the power player's perspective because what more can they do, right? Like they, they dominated, what else can they do? Mm -hmm. But yeah, unfortunately, it just, it really does just look like they snagged, the top three players in the region and no one else really holds a candle to it. And, and I'm afraid that just won't yield good results internationally. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like they're, they're, I don't know, like beat, beating teams that you're supposed to beat and not having any issues and then running up to teams that you're not supposed to beat and expecting to beat them. I don't like that formula. Yeah. Like, I think that's going to be very difficult. Yeah. Can I ask you guys a question kind of off topic? I was thinking about this the other day. How much money, because of how expensive flights are from Australia, I'm pretty sure Psyonix covers flights for teams that make lands. Yeah. How much money do you yeah. think Psyonix has spent just on tour sauce? He's made like 15 <laughs> lands and they have to fly him from Australia. Like they, if I'm a, if I'm an Epic guy, I'm probably watching like OC regionals. Like, Bro, oh God. hey, here's the thing. They, they, they love tour sauce. Tour sauce has provided them years of uh, tax write-offs. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to fly this guy in from Australia four times a year. It sucks. But yeah, anyway. That's, I'll, I'll, well, I mean, I'll, so, well, let's, let's, let's pose the same question for rule one. Like, what's more likely, a round four exit for power or a top eight qualification? Round four exit. Round four exit. Yeah, I think it's the yeah. exact it's the exact inverse. And I mean, I think that's what's going to happen. I don't even I don't even think they'll make it to round five. Yeah, I mean, only five of those seven teams that we talked about in you know being like the cream of the crop, the four, the you know top three EU, top two NA, and then the number one me and number one Sam. Only five of them can be can be qualified by the time round five is around. Like yeah, two of those teams right. are going to be in there. Yeah. And then you still have rule one, OG, LG. It's like complexity, like, yeah. and then you got to fit in and like power that it's just, it's tough. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a lot. The thing is like, it's definitely going to be, it's going to feel like doubt in them. And, and I guess to some degree it is, but it's more just like the rest of the field is so strong right now. Yes, totally. And we, we all know the dynamic of the OCE players. They unfortunately, same with APAC and, and SSA as well. They just don't have that central server mm -hmm. like sam can go na mina can go eu and it's tough to improve at the same rate totally. as those players in those regions because you just don't have as much quality competition to get those reps in yeah for sure. well let's ask this then i mean which team will emerge in round four between pioneers elevate limitless we'll talk about our oce apac ssa uh squads all kind of together um who do you guys have more? Uh, who do you who do you place your your faith in between those three teams to to make it past that um, lower round three and, and and survive elimination? Only one of those teams has Pacific Zen, and that's why Elevate <laughs> is going to be coming out of the O three round. I mean, the reason that we pose this question is that barring in like anything insane happening, yeah. three of those teams are going to be in the O two yeah. round, which means they're going to be one of them matched up with each other. I think Elevate's going to give. Uh, a better fight in that oh, the O2 round. Uh, I think all three of them are getting swept. But I think in that, oh, sorry, O1 round, I think they're going to give a better fight, maybe take a game, while the other two maybe not. So they're going to get with uh, one of the teams to get swept. And I think they're going to beat Pioneers. I think they're going to beat Pioneers. I'm sorry, OC. I know I've been, you know, riding for power. I'm not riding for Pioneers. Um, <laughs> give me Elevate, get like a 3-2 dub. Sneaky, like classic series, maybe. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Pioneers Elevate, like, if you, you know, it's going to be a late game, but like, it'll be intense. Like, you're, I'm going to, I will be watching that one oh, yeah. for like some of the three, uh, the two O rounds. So, yeah. Sneaky, sneaky. Make sure you're watching Pioneer Elevate if it happens.
I yeah, I, I, I have Elevate in my power rankings uh, in between the two Oceanic teams, which, yeah, maybe it's disrespectful, yeah, but I'll, I'll own it. Are we all three going Elevate here? Oh, Kevin just absolutely Let's go. It's, it, I mean, it's the power of swings. It's the, That's right. yeah. the team he has behind him. Um, they shown us that APAC can do a little... Can do a little. Uh, I don't know. Do a little like, trolling. The other, the other team. It's like, yeah, they're like, you know, just the same players I've ever seen. But like, elevate. They're new. They got this they're new they, young player. Yeah. They're like fun. They like That's love right. it. And like that attitude just should get you a series. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I'll say, uh, you know, similar to what we talked about earlier with the um, the chat prediction. We, we the chat ended up having elevate over pioneers, and they were definitely. It was a minority, but. There were some folks that were very upset with that and thought it was just Oof. absolutely absurd yeah. to think that the Elevate team, and I, I I disagree with that. Even if you do think that Pioneer should win that and you think that they will, I think Elevate, I think they're, they are a step up from what APAC has sent in the past. Exactly. 100%. Yeah. That's you know what, what I'm mean? looking at as well. And, and that, that doesn't mean that they're going to go round five mm -hmm. or anything crazy, but I think it's very possible that they survive that round three elimination and, and you know, I mean, you know, facing a tough, if, tough opponent if, round if, four. If, if LG is getting swept by NRG, I swear to the heavens, please do not lose to elevate with okay. the mental health of the North American <laughs> <laughs> Rocket League scene. You will never hear the end of that, yeah. <laughs> like they got, like APAC yeah. got EU. APAC got EU at Worlds. We Ian's going to have to find a couple new co-hosts. Okay. We'll be yeah. <laughs> We need to keep it over them that APAC's beating EU, even if it was like one APAC player. But yeah, please don't do that. Rattles, I swear to God, the YouTube video won't be worth it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the click okay. right on this. <laughs> so let's do this. While we're on the topic of the regions and, and we're running through, um, not not necessarily predictions, but we're kind of alluding to what we think. So let's. I'm going to jump down a couple segments and we'll just go straight mm -hmm. to our top four predictions and we can kind of, you know, give yeah. a little bit of a context around it. So does anyone want to go first? If not, I don't mind to lead the way here. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so sure. what, I, um, what I think is uh, top four teams – I like Carmi Corp. I think it would be silly for me not to put them in. Mm -hmm. I like G2. I think that is it's very possible if those guys play, you know, anywhere near what they're capable of. Um, I think a top four is, is very achievable for them. I'm throwing Falcons in there. I really like that Falcons nice. team. I'm high on them. I, I, I'm, I'm optimistic. And then this fourth spot is where I just get stuck. I think Vitality, if they play well, that could be our fourth team. Mm -hmm. I think BDS, if they're rocking, I think that could be our fourth team. I think a, an outside chance, but I think Furia could rock in there as a top four. And then I also think that that Gen G team um, could be top four. What I'm going to go with, or, I, you know, I'm going I'm to go, I'm going to go Vitality. I'm going to go nice. Vitality there in the top four. Great I idea. think, um, I think it, I think they are, no, it may not has ha have, it may not have happened as quickly as they would like, but I think that they are. I feel like a regain is inevitable, and I don't. I don't necessarily mean back to the dominance of winning, but I think seeing what we saw in this three, third regional is much more of what I would like be okay with. You know, as a fall off, um, the first couple events we just saw like e egregious mistakes. I mean, mm -hmm. that that loss to Carmen Court where they call the timeout and then immediately get scored on kickoff. Mm -hmm. And then they lost like what was it like nine two yeah, or nine something? Two. Yeah, oops. Oh my word! Like that is not this. That's not the vital. That like, that fall off is unacceptable. Yeah, that is not really what right. I would expect from them. Um, and regional one, obviously, they had a tough loss to General Mates in that game seven, but they shouldn't have been down three zero. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like those are the things that I think is unacceptable. And I think they obviously feel the same. But what we saw in this most recent regional, I don't think it's as strong as what we saw in the past, but. You know, they're going through some changes. They got a new coach. Obviously, there's, um, I would say, an elevation of competition around them as well. I think their peers all got better. So, but but this this gives me, you know, it, it, it uh, brings some peace, I guess, peace of mind. Mm -hmm. I think that this is much more of what I expect from them. So I'll say we got uh, we got Casey, Vitality, Falcons, G2 as our top four. 
Uh, that's my prediction for congratulations yeah. Lee. you've actually brought down the top four to not more than four teams <laughs> you've done it it was tough okay. bro. it was tough i need a i need okay i need a final i need a winner and i need an mvp i need you to stand on business yeah i can do I it final um, final, final i'm going i'm going kc falcons Whew. i'm going a KC little falcons rematch. final It's a tough one. I'm going Casey. I can see it. I'll, I'll go Casey with the dub, and then I will say Vatira as MVP. I re- I really want to see Falcons get the win. I really want to see it. I mean, I, I like your vitality pick because it's a land pick, right? Yeah. yeah. It's a team yeah. that can perform at land. That's right. It's a Zen pick. This is a land that they can. But my top four is Carmi Core, mm-hmm. Team BDS, mm-hmm. G2, and Team Falcons. Mm. That's what I'm going with. I like that. I like that. Vitality is just not in there. I yeah. couldn't do it. No, I respect the consistency. Yeah. If you would flip now, I would have. I would have. Yeah, would've, this is the moment for me to troll, isn't it? Yeah. This is <laughs> this is where I throw everything overboard and just tr- go hard troll. But I couldn't. I couldn't. Zen MVP. They throw right. a party for him. Yeah. Um, but no. I, I need a final winner and an MVP. Uh, it, it's gonna be Carmen Corp Team BDS as a final. As boring, as boring, as boring as it sounds. After break grand final. Bro. Yeah, um, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I can go home a little earlier. <laughs> European fans will never do that. They will not leave before the ceremony. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we will see them lift the trophy. He's going to be like, no one wants to watch me play. We do not have to beat the traffic because we're not ASCAR centric. That's because y'all got trains. Exactly. Yeah, train, buddy. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you get, it. get some trains. Get some trains. <laughs> you can stay till the ceremony. Trains, man. Yeah. Get uh, some so trains. Michael, hit us with it. it. This is an urbanism podcast now. What do you say, Michael? Do you, do you have Carmen Core winning? I do. I do have and them you, winning. And your MVP is Vatiro? Um, mm, oof, I mean, I'll give it to Rise, actually. Okay, nice. I like that. Nice. I'll give it to Rise. Vatiro has won enough MVP medals for a lifetime. Including uh, the fall major him. offensive MVP, the worst MVP ever given out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but, all right, Michael. Yeah. Let's hear it. What are you cooking? All right. So I did my I did my bracket today. Shout out to yeah. Adam Core. Shout Everyone out to Adam Core. Helps out. Legend, mm-hmm. vital to the community. Um, I've been thinking about it a lot. I've done like a bunch of them over the past, just like trying to figure out what I feel. And I've come down to my my top four teams, I believe, and it's not who you think it would be. Okay. <gasps> my top four teams. I got KC in there. I got Falcons in there. Do you I know like that? I got G two in there. I like oh, that. Really? You know who that four team is? Oh no! Mobile One Racing, baby. <laughs> My oil. Got Casey, Gen G, and G two Falcons. One EU top four. I got I got Gen G beating Vitality in the top eight. You know, classic FK top eight masterclass. Mm-hmm. Silence in the European crowd as mm. he does. Um, and then I got Casey. Beating Genji, and there's gonna be some. Like they're probably their controller is gonna die or something. There's gonna be some controversy. <laughs> Obviously, Genji's better, but Casey will just win because they have plot armor. Go to the final. I got G2 beating Mina, continuing Mina's struggles against North America, four uh, one. And then in the final, I'm taking my boys, Uh-oh. G2 Esports, to beat Carmine Corp. <laughs> And you know what? On my bracket, I got Carmen Corp winning. But you guys both pick Carmen Corp, so I'm going <laughs> against the gray. <laughs> There's a troll. I, had, I, I will say I had it 4-3. I, I'm, I'm predicting yeah, it'll be close. a while since we had a classic grand final. I think we're going to yeah. get a classic grand final at this one. We're going to go G2-4-3. I think at the end of the day, I think G2 just has a little bit more of a second level they haven't discovered yet. That's similar to when they won the winter major. They'll discover mid-tournament mm. and they'll provide... Yeah. It's a fantastic, fantastic storyline. And my MVP will be the boy, Beast Mode, because I think Beast Mode is the best land player on the team. Uh, I think Daniel's the best player on the team at this point, but I think Beast Mode, man, when that kid hits his peak on land, I mean, Ryze and Vatira, they're going to start having flashbacks of all those lands where they'd see him early in the tournament, and he would just start cooking up. So give me G2 over Carmen Corp in the final. Uh, 4-3, Beast Mode MVP. Let's do, uh, let's do this, just because I'm, I'm so, so curious. Uh, let's finish out the top eight for each okay, of us. Okay, I got. I think my top eight was uh, complexity, 
Com it was Complexity, Carmen Corp, uh, Vi uh, Vitality, Gen G, G2, Furia, and then Falcons, BDS. So I got, I got BDS losing to Falcons in thrilling fashion. Two, two Sam, top eight. Yeah, yeah, I, I had I had Sam rule one as my like final one, mm. and I just I, I gave one. just off like it's a tough one. I just don't know how mm -hmm. to like I just I yeah. gave him a little three two. Go ahead. Yeah, at that point there's so many good teams. Like, I didn't like, fill out the brackets. To finish it off. I didn't fill out the Atom Core brackets, mm -hmm. um, so I'm just going off like my power rankings. Yeah. And in that case, the second seed from. Uh, both Mina and from South America just fall out of outside of my top eight. So then the playoffs will also feature Team Fatality, Genji, Furia, and Gentlemates. Yeah. Nice. Um, <clears throat> I have been saying it the whole time. I'm just going to stick with it. I, I got uh, KC, BDS, Vitality. I got... Uh, Falcons, I've got Furia, I've got G2 and Gen G, and then I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna throw OG in there. I think they're gonna sneak their way into that that top eight. Nice. All right. Nice. Love that. Go Naps. Go. Go Naps. Go. Yeah, re repping for the '90s, my man. Okay. He's old. He's from Canada. He's just like me. <laughs> He's just like me. He's just like for me. real. For real. Uh, we love, no, we love not even joking. At the World Championship Finals, when he they like they like panned over to him at the beginning of the player intros, and he like put up the Canadian flag. I was like, "Cheer him up!" Like I love the tear fell from his eye. <laughs> I was like, I wanted to salute him. Like, <laughs> all right. Got, well, let's keep on the uh, the theme of, of players that we like to uh, cheer for. This segment is called "By the Dip." If any of you have not checked out Fantasy for Rocket League, you need to. It's a fun thing. It's free. You just fill out a team and and see what you get. FanRL.com, you can check that out. Um, also, just want to reiterate one more time, as Michael said, shout out to Adam Core creating these brackets. Obviously, he does not have to do that. He spent a lot of time, put a lot of effort into it. They're phenomenal. So, they make so much content. Um, but shout out to these people like big uh, big fan, Dano, Adam Core, that, that create these, um, just these fun things for us to do in the community that, that, that we love, RL Esports. So, by the dip. We are going to select a player that we think would be a great value for their price for fantasy. Now, please understand this. Fantasy is not the exact same thing as best player. It's just not the same thing. Sometimes a player that you think is incredible doesn't really end up um, garnering or, or gaining the stats throughout the game. Obviously, we know that Rocket League can be kind of wonky with stats as well. You know, you get shots on target, and, and it's just like a rolling ball or something. So uh, keep that in mind as well as we make these prediction or as we make these selections, excuse me. Um, anyone want to go first with their pick? Allow me. Allow me. Okay. <laughs> Have you joined the FanRL platform, and your mm. team sucks and is bad? Mm. Are you trying I mean, to figure don't. out why you can't you, – you keep picking first killer and Zen, but your team still stinks? Well, it's because you're not looking at value picks. And now let me allow you to show you a great value pick. And that value pick is Ahmad at just $1,400. $1,400. 14? FanRL dollars. That is a good value. You can get, I have actually just been, uh, I actually think I'm wrong. No, I'm right. Sorry. I was looking at Khaled. He was 1450 But Ahmad, man, this guy is a LAN player. He's a sniper. He can play around other great players, as he's done with TRK and Anupo. He can play on the ball, and he has always filled it up. You know, TRK was the guy. Nupo is now the guy. But I, sw I swear to you, at every land that I've watched, these, like, Ahmed always sticks out to me because he is slotting things, saving yeah. things. And for $1,400, I bet you he's going to pull out a, a couple good performances and, and and stay in that like low mid 500 range is where you want your value picks to be. Yeah, that's a, that's a great, that's a great, um, a great amount of points for 1400 too. Yeah. Hootie, what about so I'll you? go ahead and go, I'll go, I'll go second here. Special? Um, my choice is going to be Sphinx on elevate. Um, he's sitting at a cost of 1450. So it's a little bit, you know, 50 more than Ahmad, but here, here's why. Okay. <clears throat> Number one, I do think Close. Sphinx is going to be very active on ball. A lot of times that will, you know, the more touches, more action on ball, that's going to yield good good results as far as shots on target, goals, et cetera. 
Um, also, I think he is a pivotal piece with that team's success, doing a lot of scoring. And I also think that he is going to be called into action on defense as well. Obviously, the first couple series in the major is going to be a challenge for this Elevate team. Um, and none of the three are going to be able to handle defense alone. So I think it's going to be a balanced effort there for them. Um, but, and this is going to be a little bit savage, there is going to be an early exit for Elevate. They are not going to go super deep in the tournament. They're not going top eight, top four. And a lot of times, as your players continue to go in the tournament, obviously things get tougher. You know, the, the fewer teams left in the tournament, the competition gets more stiff, and sometimes it's harder to put up the statistics uh, that you may have earlier in the event. So you may be thinking, well, Elevate's not a good team. Why are you picking them, Hootie? Well, because I'm big brain, okay? You pick a star player for a, uh, you know, a value price on a team that's going to exit early. It is the formula for success on fantasy. Put Sphinx on your roster, and you will thank me later. All right, Jens, round us up. Well, you know, Furia might have Durfino in the back more than the other two players, right? You have Jan, you have Lost. They're going to go for the goals. They're going to go for the shots. Um, but it's still a really good value pick, I believe, because yeah. he's only 1,400. And um, he, I think he was yeah, top right. of Sam statistically for and a thick and thing, right? The for thing is, it's not just that Furia has been performing in their own region. It's also that Durfino has been performing on his own team. If you look at yeah. the ratings, he's been improving. Of course, the ratings isn't everything in terms of uh, actual player's ability, but it is in terms of their uh, fantasy value. And his rating has just been going up. It's it's gone from a 0.8 uh, during a, as an average during an event to a 1.1, which is really good to see, you know? Yeah. So it's it's still kind of an undervalued pick, maybe not the pick that is going to net you the most points, but for the money, uh, for that fourteen hundred dollars, that's that's still an undervalued pick, I believe, because he's yeah. only been improving uh, in 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 the late in recent I'm, uh, recent I'm events. Right now, at the overall overall rankings for Sam, courtesy mm -hmm. of Shift RLE .gg, go, go go click that up. Uh, lost one point zero eight goals per game over the entire split. Okay, 1.55 saves per game. That's more than Yan. More goals and more saves than Yan. Just a thought. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, Lost is not that expensive either, so that would be yeah. cool. But uh, well, Drafinho, I, I think... I was going to say with oh, your Drafinho pick, I was, because... I was, like, <laughs> I was staring at Lost on the on the platform, and you were talking about Fury, and I was like, he's talking about Lost. My bad. I mean, Lost is absolutely what? a value pick as well, even yeah, though he's a little bit more expensive. Note on the Drafinho choice, though, is at home, they're probably not like tested too much defensively, at least mm -hmm. not to the degree that they will be here. And that is kind of the role that Drafino gets um, a little bit of action, a little bit more action than the other two. Obviously yeah. they're, they're hyper aggressive. So he will be making some saves, especially at this major where, as I said, the the, the level of competition across the board is going to be raised. So save some like points. Too. we got uh, a couple, um, a couple of choices true. at 1400. We got a choice at 50, uh, 1450. So there's some, some picks, as Michael said, obviously you're going to throw a monkey moon on your team of a Tira, you know, somebody that's super high price that, you know, is going to net you some points, but you need somebody to counterbalance that. And there are some value picks for you to throw on your fan RL team. Go check it out. FanRL.com. And we got one final segment and we actually, Michael, you're on a time yeah, crunch. Gonna, so we actually I, have I, to I do gotta, speed I taking. I'm gonna, I get a, I get a bounce. So we got. Well, here's what we'll do. On, I'm gonna throw seconds. you. I'm gonna throw you your two, mm -hmm. and you will. You actually got to speed take it. All right. Come Are on. you ready? Go 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 go. A North American player moves to Europe next season. No, because they won't take him. Uh, the only thing it could be would be some sort of super team, including a Joyo, LJ, and Oski, and that's not happening because uh, all three of them are on Mbappe contracts on their orgs. Next question. <laughs> Coaches should follow Sad Junior's lead and wear suits on stage at the major. That's well, Michael. I literally wrote that take because I wanted to talk about it. Uh, I, you should do it. It's so cool. Uh, you look awesome. You get to wear cologne. Uh, you get to comb your hair back, and you get to do cool like you can become a cool gift where you go yeah, and you're like your like jacket comes up. You take and, it and off. You, be, you put on your thing. You can become a cool gift. Yeah, exactly. And that's what being coaching coaching is about. Ask Pep. Ask Pop. Ask Klopp. They're right. all great gifts, and that's why they should do it. All right. Okay, Michael. Awesome. All right. Thank you for thank you for joining us. Best of luck. We'll catch you next time. We'll talk soon. Gen G, first killer. Do not let me down. <laughs> you have to worry about more than you you know. The people you know you have to worry about if you let me down.
But yeah, okay, I'll talk to you guys. All right. Uh, and enjoy the major, everybody. Thank you. See you, buddy. All right. All right, we're going to close out that section. Um, we've got a couple more. we got four more takes that we're going to split between Yens and I. Um, obviously, there's a little bit of a time thing here. Michael's got an obligation, um, so he had to leave early. But we'll finish this up. I'll throw you one, and then you throw me one, and then we'll finish up like that. Okay. Okay. Uh, here's a take. A team, I guess any team, reverse mm -hmm. sweeps the Swiss stage at Copenhagen. So they go um, down, yeah, O2, and then sweep it out. No, if you have a system like book holes uh, going on like they do in, in Counter-Strike, uh, then there is a better opportunity for uh, a reverse sweep. But once you're down there, you're down there. Uh, there it's not going to happen. So, And I think, I mean, with the way our spots are allocated to throughout different regions, mm -hmm. Like if you end up in the O2 round, you're yeah. you're probably not reverse sweeping out. So yeah, because you're going to be one of those teams from a weaker region. Let's just be be realistic about it. Yeah. Uh, you want to take as well, right? Yes. You want to take. Uh, there will be a new contender for best land series of all time at Copenhagen. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yes, I am so excited for this. I think when when we have these huge breaks, and and I know this is a little bit different than COVID, which was very long, but this is a, a good seven month eight month break from the last LAN, it feels like that is that's just a long time and the players you know they they improve at a very rapid rate um on, on top mm -hmm. of that i think vitality just lit a fire under the entire scene last season you know with what they did and and, and how difficult they were to be everyone was um you know desperate to improve we saw all kinds of roster changes people flopping regions as well and obviously just just a lot of a lot of players on the grind and so i think I think the level that we're going to see specifically like round five forward is going to be absolutely phenomenal, unbelievable. And I, I would, I mean, I would even go so far as to say, I think, I mean, we're, it's like a 95% chance that we're going to get an all time great series. I don't know how we don't get an all time great series mm. from, uh, from the caliber mm. of teams that we're going to see. That's the thing, right? It might not be the most stacked major because you have some sure. weaker teams in there as well, but at the top, it is mm -hmm. top heavy and mm -hmm. you're going to have some teams, some teams coming up against each other, maybe in, in the semifinals yeah. that are going to bang. It's going to be so good, man. All right. Um, I'm going to throw this to you because this is something that I'm, I'm just ignorant about. So in the next five yeah. years, RLCS will become similar to Counter-Strike where EU is the only internationally competitive region. Yeah, I don't believe so, because when it comes to Counter-Strike, it started out as EU only. And I, I know Rocket League kind of yeah. as well, but North America has always been a, a major region, right? And you've never really had that. Um, North America right now in Counter-Strike looks extremely weak, but you still have the South, the Brazilian teams who are good. Um, so you could even say that Counter-Strike isn't completely just European, but all the tournaments are played in Europe. All the, the teams, even the Brazilian teams, are constantly basically just living in EU to, okay. to play their tournaments there. Um, but that's not how RLCS is, is shaping up right now. You have the, the organizations and that's, you know, a huge part of the ecosystem in North America and they want to stay in North America. They want to play North American Rocket League. So yeah. I don't see it happening. In fact, I mean, we're even waving some dollars at EU players coming over. So. That's right. That's right. So if anything, it will be there because the money is there. But the yeah. tournaments, uh, because also because the RLCS is, is much more a rigid system compared to all the tournament organizers organizing different things on different times and different years in Counter-Strike, you're going to have a continuation in some way or form of EU majors and world championships and NA majors and world championships. So when that system keeps uh, being there, then this is not going to change. Yeah. And Mina and Sam are are not, I mean, they're showing signs of like ramping up. You know, it's right, not getting yeah. weaker by any means. Yeah. Well, the, the thing is that like in Counter-Strike, that could happen, but then those teams would move over to play the European oh, competition. I understand. Okay, okay. So it's I not like they can't be gotcha. strong, but everyone will move to a region, be boot camping constantly, be playing from there, just not be home, basically. Understood. Okay, okay. I see. But yeah, I don't see that happening either. Yeah. And um, what's the take left? Uh, I think it's uh, D. If G2 struggle at the major, Daniel will face the most criticism no matter how well he plays. Uh, yeah, 
I think that is a, I think that is true. Um, I do think that that team will face a ton of criticism if they do struggle. And by struggle, I think we're we're saying like a, you know, a round five exit. I even think a top eight would be like pretty heavily criticized um, mm-hmm. for for G two. <laughs> and yeah, I do think Daniel will. Um, I mean, Atomic, he has won a, a major and been to the grand finals of worlds. And I think a lot of people still, you know, they, they value that heavily and understandably, uh, rightfully so. Um, Beast Mode and Daniel obviously got the win in Gamers 8, but, um, you know, people want to see it. They want to see it done in RLCS. On top of that, I think one of the things that Daniel has to face that Beast Mode just doesn't really have to face is that Daniel was like the direct NA comparison to Zen. And I know Zen came afterwards, but yeah. they were saying that they're so similar. And then you saw what Zen did. And obviously Daniel was not able to do that when he moved in. And so, yeah, I just feel as though Daniel will be the most criticized on that team. Really? Don't, don't you think that if he shows up and the team doesn't really perform, but he still has crazy mechanics and people can see, people yeah. love to look at just the mechanical place, right? Don't you think yeah. people will just be memeing like, no help, no help? Uh, uh, if yes, I mean, that definitely down. will that definitely will happen. But I do also think that a lot of people will say, it, it, "You like you have to get it done." You know, you have two players mm-hmm. that are top five in your region. Sure, they didn't play well, but I, I think you know we see. I think we see a similar sentiment with First Killer. You know, he's obviously been a very talented player for a long time, and he's had a, a couple different rosters that have been very talented. And you know, people. Those things don't matter when you don't win, right? It doesn't matter if they play right. well. If, they, if he do, if he plays well, um, or how well he plays, I should say. Ultimately, you know, winning cures all. You know, I've heard that phrase for a few different things, whether it's you know toxicity or or whatever else. But um, yeah, I think I think people are. There was so much praise for Daniel, and so much excitement for him as he was walking into the league, and. You know, the first team that he was on with Space Station just didn't find the success that I, I think would have, you know, like made good on the hype. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and so I think people have just been waiting for it. And everybody continues to say, well, he's still a good player. He's still this. And then he joins V1 and they completely flub in the spring. And so I think a lot of people are, you know, not not only are they losing patience in him making good on the hype, but I think that kind of the narrative switching, like hmm. he's overhyped. You know, he's not as good um, as we thought he was. Obviously, mechanically, mechanically incredibly talented, but you eventually have to get those results or people will, you know, they'll, they'll flop on you. So, yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I, I can see saying, people though. say that's that a, a fair point, he's being that definitely... dragged down, you know, yeah. uh, and, and the others are not getting up to his level and, right. and everything like that. But, you know, hopefully uh, we won't see it because I would like a, a strong North American team uh, at the LAN, and I can see that being uh, oh. G2. So, all right. All right. I, that wraps it up. That wraps it up. Um, I did not see your message on speed taking. I'm sorry. That's all right. Well, we got through it. And um, I mean, I'm going to go to Copenhagen also- soon and uh, go do the reporting from there. So, if you follow shifts, then you'll see me around. <laughs>